Hello everyone, welcome back to Options Made Simple. I've been getting a lot of requests for Vega Focus videos lately, so I'm going to talk about counter spreads because counter spreads are very sensitive to changes in Vega. When implementing Vega strategies, it's important to understand how Vega affects different options. If needed, you can review my video on the Greeks that gives a more in-depth analysis on Vega and other Greeks, but we'll do a quick rundown here before we get into the strategies. So here's what you need to know. Vega is the change in contract price per 1% increase in volatility. Vega decreases over time. This means that longer dated options are more sensitive to changes in Vega than options that have an earlier expiration. At the money options have the greatest amount of Vega e exposure, while out the money and in the money options have less exposure to changes in Vega. So keeping that in mind, we'll begin with counter spreads. Most investors buy counter spreads because it allows a selling of options while still limiting risk and keeping the option you sold covered. This is done by buying an option that has a further out expiration than the one you sold. I generally like to classify this as the front month and the back month option. During times of volatility, the IV tends to become very inflated for the front month options while the back months don't always have the same extreme rise in IV. When evaluating a counter spread for an option that has had a rapid rise in IV, at a glance it may appear as if you're getting a great risk reward on the calendar with a wide profitability range, and initially this is true. I'll use Virgin Galactic as our first example because it has had a nice bump in IV lately. Currently, the July contracts have an IV of 212%, while the August contracts have an IV of 155%. This is obviously a big difference and allows us to buy counter spreads for cheaper than normal since the front month contract prices are so inflated. Let's say we buy a July August counter spread with a $50 strike price for $2.50. This would give us a profitability graph that looks like this. Our max loss is what we paid for the spread, which would be $250. Our max profit would be almost $700 and the spread would be profitable at expiration if the price of Virgin Galactic stays between $35 and $81. But this is assuming that the IV stays the same at the current level and doesn't decrease by the time your spread expires, which is very unlikely. So using the Thinkorswim volatility adjuster, let's see what would happen to the spread if the IV were to drop by 50% at the contract's expiration. If Virgin Galactic were to experience a 50% drop in volatility, you see that your profitability range becomes much more narrow and your max profit decreases as well. You would now need the price to stay between 41 and 63 in order for the spread to be profitable and your max profit has decreased to about $400 at expiration. So why does this happen? In order for the spread to be most profitable for you, the price of your back month contracts has to stay consistent and maintain their value while the front month contracts decay. Since further dated options are more sensitive to changes in Vega, as the IV drops, your Vega sensitive back month contracts are actually losing more value relative to your front month contracts. So even though your front month contract did decay and experience IV crush, your back month contracts got Vega crushed and overall made your spread less valuable. So the lesson here is when IV is already elevated, selling calendar spreads is actually a more Vega efficient strategy to effectively capture the Vega crush that will likely occur when the IV drops. Although the downfall of this is it can be very hard to get good premium on the counter spreads due to the elevated price of the front month contract which may result in a very poor risk reward ratio. To have the greatest success when buying calendars, you want the IV of your back month contract to be at a historical low and for it to be at least a few months out so it can have a greater exposure to changes in Vega. Let's use Tesla as an example since it's currently in a state of historically low IV. For our back month contract, we'll choose October and we'll do September for our front month contract. Tesla is currently trading at $655, so assuming we're bullish on Tesla, we'll choose a strike price of $750. The IV for the September 750 contract is 51%, 
with the Vega of $1.13 and the IV for the October contract is 52% with a Vega of $1.37. If you've ever traded Tesla, you know it's not unreasonable to expect the IV for Tesla contracts to shoot up in the 100 or 200% range if it's having one of its volatility spells. This spread would cost us $10.95. Our max loss would be $1,095. Our max gain would be about $3,000. And the spread is profitable if Tesla closes between $662 and $858. Now all we need is a rise in volatility, which is the biggest unknown for buying counter spreads during times of low volatility because you can't exactly know when volatility is going to happen, but you can do your best to predict. So the reason why I chose October as the back month contract is because Tesla will likely have their earnings report in October and earnings are usually catalysts for increased volatility. Since October is currently three months away, it is unlikely that, that the volatility has been priced into those contracts yet. So let's assume that Elon went on a Twitter rant that caused the market to suddenly get really bullish on Tesla, which caused a 50% spike in the IV of the contracts. Due to the higher Vega exposure for your October contracts, they would gain value at a faster rate than the September contracts that you sold. Your profit and break-even variables would change drastically as you can see displayed on the chart. Our max loss is still $1,095. Our break-even range is now $540 and $1,090. And our maximum gain is about $7,200. This would be an extremely profitable trade for you, even if you got the direction wrong and Tesla wasn't anywhere near the 750 strike, you would still have made a profit if the price was within the profitability range. The last thing I'll add to this is how to keep a counter spread Vega neutral if you just wanted to try to capture IV crush with a counter spread. I'll use Moxian as an example. Currently, the 30 strike August contracts have an IV of 217% and a Vega of 0.04 with a Delta of 0.64, while the February 30 strike contracts have an IV of 153%, Vega of 0.08, and a Delta of 0.72. This means that if I bought the February contract and sold short the August contract, I would be positive 0.04 Vega and at risk of Vega crush. To balance this out, I would have to sell two August contracts for every February contract I purchase. This would then give me a Vega of zero, making the position Vega neutral. Although, all those contracts that you sold short are going to give your position a ton of negative delta, which would make it a very bearish position. If you wanted to maintain directional neutrality on this position, you can delta hedge by buying shares of stock. Keep in mind that one share of stock is equivalent to one delta. For example, if I sold two August contracts and bought one February contract, this would give the position a delta of negative 56. To balance it, I would buy 56 shares of stock, which would bring the delta close to about zero. To maintain directional neutrality, you would have to buy or sell shares to balance your delta at the end of the trading day to keep it close to neutral. Also, as the Vega fluctuates on the contracts, you may need to buy or sell additional contracts to stay Vega neutral on the position as well. Overall, if you're hoping to maintain neutrality on, on your Greeks, it's going to be a very actively managed position that can require significant capital to maintain. As you can see, counter spreads are probably one of the safest and inexpensive ways to profit off of changes in Vega due to the defined risk and various profit potential. One thing to keep in mind as well is, if your counter spread doesn't work out the way you were hoping and your front month contract expires worthless, then you just paid off a portion of your back month contract. So if you bought a 25 strike call calendar for 75 cents and the underlying was only $20 at the time of expiration, then the front month call would expire worthless and you would be left with a $25 call that you had purchased for the back month. That call would have only cost you a total of $0.75 cents, and your call would have a break even of $25.75 and you would have the whole month for them to hopefully expire in the money. I hope this helped you all understand counter spreads a bit better in relation to Vega and you can all go out and make a fuck ton of money putting spreads on everything. 
If you have any questions or requests, feel free to throw them in the comments. See y'all later.